Why did you decide to become a professor here after being at NHH and the London School of Economics? Well, I think life kind of happens to you sometimes. So in some ways, I fell here. We moved from Bergen to Oslo. But I've been so happy to be at BI as opposed to some of the other schools, just in terms of its uh, innovativeness and ability to try new things. So I don't know if it was a conscious decision to come here, but it's definitely a conscious decision to stay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, what classes do you teach at BI? Well, I've had a variety of classes over the years, but predominantly it's been within negotiation, economic psychology, and managing workplace differences. Uh, what classes do you teach in the leadership and change major? That's the managing uh, workplace diversity. Um, what do you think makes it special, this course? Well, I think what makes it special is students really have to think for themselves. Often you come in and you think, okay, I know what diversity is about. It's either gender or religion or ethnic background. But when we get the dialogue started, we start realizing what is this concept and where does it exist and what is the context, uh, context around it. And then we talk about issues such as uh, status and privilege. And I think this is often an eye-opening experience for students, not so much with the teaching, but with what they teach one another, the different insights, especially the students that are on exchange or the international students can often open up really new uh, areas for thinking about it. So I think uh, what I, I love about teaching the course is you always learn something new as a teacher. You learn about different uh, aspects or different ways of approaching it. Hmm. Um, what is your hoped impact on students? What do you hope that students take away from your classes? Well, mainly that they don't accept uh, the reality as it's presented, that they always put forward critical questions about what life is about, about what work is about, what relationships are about, and who they are about. So for me, it's really important that we learn from the research, we are inspired by other academics, and at the same time, we never stop thinking for ourselves, and we take that learning and research and put it in the appropriate context. So that's really important for me and so we do a lot of dilemmas and and cases in class that uh, have no one right answer and yet some really really good questions I think what are you most passionate about and how do you try to incorporate it in class yeah I think my passion has always been I hate injustice <laughs> and I hate inequality. So for me, uh, the thing that's really important, if we're educating leaders, we can find all the science and evidence out there, but it's how we use it and how do we use it to make the world a better place. And then when I say better place, what is that? Well, each individual has to climb into who they are to find that. And when they find that, they can use research and science and other people's input in order to to achieve those goals. So I'm passionate about injustice and inequality, and I think that leaders tomorrow, today, uh, they can really help uh, uh, narrow the gap. Mm. What, how do you think are your classes different from Honors or Mia's class? Mm -hmm. What do you do in class different? Oh, that's a great question. I'd like to say I'd know right off. Uh, luckily, I have been teaching with Miha, so that is fun uh, uh, in terms of I tend to have uh, um, quite a, how would I say, loud style maybe, or <laughs> a little bit, uh, uh, I gesticulate a lot. And uh, uh, I like to put forward questions. I might say that compared to Arna, the type of research that we use in uh, managing workplace diversity, it's often more quantitative, social psychology, more at the interpersonal level. I'd say that would be one uh, difference. Uh, the use of dilemmas rather than real world cases, it's uh, uh, ideas is about how you'd actually lead the diversity. Again, it's very much at the group and interpersonal level. Mm. What makes you unique as a professor? Oh, wow. Well, uh, there's that quote I love. I think it was Oscar Wilde. Uh, uh, no sense being any, anybody else. Everybody else is always taken or something like that, paraphrasing. Uh, so unique? I don't know. I think most of us are unique and as long as we bring who we are to the teaching and, and we draw on our own personal experiences and draw on our own set of values, I feel that we will always offer a, a different perspective. Um, if I were to be cliche, I'd say, well, I'm Canadian in Norway and 
that makes me different by virtue. My age, I'm a little bit older now. Uh, being a woman probably makes it unique. So, And then uh, when you say that, I start thinking of unique in what context? <laughs> uh, what is unique about your personality that you can't see in other people in the department? Oh, and that's a, I'm not sure if I would see anything as uh, unique. I'm not sure if I believe in that. Well, I, I, I would say sometimes I wonder who I am and I think, oh, it must be my Canadian upbringing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, uh, I use humor a lot, but I think my colleagues do too. So I'm not sure I'm that uh, different. Uh, but I do like to try to engage people in conversations uh, with a critical perspective, not just uh, a superficial approach. Let's climb underneath. Uh, but I think, again, I share that with a lot of my colleagues. So, mm. um, What are your main takeaways from the University of British Columbia, NHH, and the London School of Economics? <laughs> my main takeaway, UBC was my, uh, where I began my university education. And I think that's when I really fell in love with uh, diversity in many ways. It was diverse where I grew up. But you go to university and in Vancouver, Canada, there's so many uh, different people and backgrounds. And so, uh, and then that uh, learning, I loved university. I always I fell in love with books. Um, so, and, and the campus, if I'm superficial. Beautiful, oh, the nature. And then um, when I went to NHH, that was my first time away from Canada, and I love Bergen, absolutely adored Bergen. And, and the teachers there, and having to call teachers by their first names really scared me, but uh, I got over it. Uh, but then I, I love studying business, and I was surprised, because I always thought business wasn't that exciting. So I really, there were some great uh, teachers there and professors, and I really uh, enjoyed uh, my learning there. And then I went on to do my doctorate there. Um, London School of Economics, I was very privileged to be able to teach there uh, for a couple of years. and. Uh, the students. The students were phenomenal. They were from all over the world, so many different backgrounds. And I was a class teacher, so all we did, we had the discussions. And uh, I, again, I learned so much, but it was a, a great and challenging opportunity. What did you teach at LSE? Well, I taught a few. Ones were, I think it was called uh, International Management, General Management, and Human Resource Management. What is your uh, biggest weakness and biggest strength? In life, in work, <laughs> as a as a person. person? Uh, okay, my biggest. Oh, I would love to do what they do in the news. My biggest strength is my biggest weakness. Uh, no, in terms of, I think I have. I, I think my weakness is I, I judge. Okay. I judge people, and and I have these criteria that I think people should live up to, and this causes me some level of. Uh, <laughs> challenges in everyday life, so that's something I can work on. Um, and at the same time, I feel that by having certain standards and making myself and others accountable to certain standards is also a strength. So on principles and as related to injustice, when you see it happening, you have to say something. So it's that balance. So in a way, it's both. And at the same time, you have to make sure that you're not criticizing and being judgmental or prejudiced, uh, not getting enough information before making the judgment. And at the same time, some of these criteria can help you put a stop to uh, uh, saying no when you see something going on in this world that's wrong. And uh, yeah, don't be the silent majority.